When we consider risks to our health, we tend to focus our attention on areas like exercise, reducing the consumption of particular foods, better sleep, and, well, other foundational elements, all of which are critical, and I'm certainly am not here to say that these areas aren't your number one priority. However, there are other areas of health that are seldom considered, one of which is a molecule known as a phthalate. If you've never heard of a phthalate or are only peripherally aware, I would strongly recommend that you listen up because the next few videos, starting with this one, might make a difference in relation to your risk of diabetes, all because of one molecule. So you might be wondering, what are phthalates? <laughs> Fair question. Uh, they're molecules used most commonly in plastics to give them greater durability, strength, and material. They can also be used for other purposes as well, but the bottom line is they come in a variety of chemical styles and are used ubiquitously across many day-to-day -day products. Another question you might have is, are they really a problem? Well, I don't want you to take my word for it, so in this video I'm going to show you some data from a study as well as offer you a systematic review, a comprehensive study of many studies on the topic of phthalates and diabetes risk. This initial study is an epidemiological study, meaning the researchers analyzed data taken from thousands of people across time and wanted to see if there was an association between certain health markers, in our case, diabetes markers, like blood sugar and insulin, and the amount of various phthalates in the urine. So across over 1,000 people, the researchers separated everyone into five groups, known as quintiles. Quintile 1 is the baseline, or the individuals with low or no phthalates found in their urine. Then, as the quintiles increase in number, that 20% of individuals have increasing levels of phthalates found in their urine. Then, the researchers compared those phthalate groupings, five being the top 20% of phthalates in the urine, to the measure of HOMA-IR, which is a measure of insulin resistance. The greater your insulin resistance, the greater your risk of diabetes. So what we see here across multiple types of phthalates is the increasing concentration in the urine is associated with increasing insulin resistance, with it being about equal at the fourth and fifth quintile levels. Now, anyone familiar with statistics will see these confidence intervals and see that they're extremely wide. But regardless, across the board, the odds are high that there is an association. If you'd like to hear more on the details, then check out the deep dive version of this study breakdown. But I also mentioned a systematic review. So while there isn't tremendous research on phthalates, this systematic review did consider it convincing that increasing phthalate levels were associated across multiple studies analyzed with harmful effects related to diabetes, increasing the risk of diabetes. So across this systematic review, along with the epidemiological study, phthalates are correlated to diabetes. However, it would be irresponsible to sit here and not mention that there could be confounding variables, other factors, that could influence both of these analyses, because a correlation, an association, is not a causative argument. That means that there might be something else that also changes, that is not controlled for in these studies, that is actually leading to the increased diabetes risk. So to be sure, we need to look at studies that only apply phthalates and control for other factors, therefore implicating phthalates alone. That said, in the next video, we're going to do just that, but we're also going to understand exactly how phthalates have this effect. What are the mechanisms involved, assuming the results here end up being causative and true? So let's follow the science a bit deeper into the body. Speak to you there.